Benny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Chris Eubank Jr. How are you doing? Good. It's been a long day, but I'm enjoying myself. I'm glad we've got the time to speak to you before that day is over. Um, you've obviously, as virtue of belonging to, not belonging to, sorry, of virtue of working with Wasserman Boxing, you are now part of the Sky Sports family once again. How do you feel about being on such a huge platform going forward? Well, it's, it's every fighter's dream, really, isn't it, to fight on Sky Sports in the UK. It's every UK fighter's dream. Um, I've been on Sky Sports many times, I've always had a great relationship with them, had some great fights and now it looks like I'm going to be fighting on Sky Sports for the foreseeable future which you know it's an exciting thing to say. I didn't think this you know if you asked me this a year ago I, I probably wouldn't have thought this would happen. Um, so a great opportunity you know they're pushing me and they're really you know they're really behind me they're really backing me on this one so I've just got to produce the goods. Being on such a huge platform, does that make the big world level fights that you've been chasing for a little while now easier to make? I believe so, yeah. Now that we've got Sky Sports behind us, there's no reason why these mega fights can't happen within the next 6-12 to 12 months. Now you'll be back out, obviously, uh, October the 2nd uh, against an opponent people might not know a lot about, but you're a big scout now, aren't you? You're a big target for these guys. Well, that's the thing, you know, even in my last fight against Marcus Morrison, who, went to, who was, you know, not a huge name in the sport, but you know he raised his game. You know he 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 brought it, and that's what all these guys are doing now. They they want my name on their record, so they're not the same fight as they usually are. Um, saying that this guy eighteen and one, so you know he's not a dummy. He knows what he's doing. Um, tough, rugged, German fighter. Um, you know the exact exactly the type of fighter that I need to to come off this long layoff with everything that's happened over the last few months. Um, it's a good, it's, a, it's the right fight to have for now. And, uh, you know, get through him, put on a good performance and then a big, big fight in December. And what's it been like working with Kala and Nisa Sauerland so far? Obviously the, the powerhouses behind Wasserman Boxing. I've got a great relationship with them. You know, um, the Sauerland brothers, obviously we go back as far as the World Boxing Super Series. We worked together in that and I had a great experience, had some great fights. And, uh, you know, ever since then we've kind of we've kept in touch and, and now we're back together, partnered with Wasserman and Sky Sports. It's, you know, the sky's the limit, you know, it really is. How did you feel about um, Harlem being signed at the same time? It must be nice to have a member of your family also on the team. Awesome, yeah, I didn't know. He kept it quiet and then he just popped up in the... Uh, yeah in the studio earlier and I was like what are you doing and he's like yeah I'm with you guys now I'm like beautiful um, yeah team Eubank strong as ever and uh, you know he's a great fighter with a lot of, he's, he's, he's got a lot of potential he's a great talent so hopefully they can push him and talk at the press conference earlier as it inevitably does turn to future fights uh, you referred to Liam Williams as snaky I believe and Billy Joe Saunders as a rat uh, is there a bit of animosity with these domestic rivals I think a bit of animosity is uh, is putting it lightly. Um, these guys need to be taught a lesson. Uh, Liam Williams is, you know, believe it or not, he's actually got a bigger mouth than Billy Joe Saunders. I didn't think it was possible, but he does. And he's been talking about it for a long time. So it's got to the point now where I think I'm just going to have to go in there and teach him a lesson, shut him up. Um, Saunders is, you know, he is what he is. Um, the rivalry is always there and we will have to settle things within the next, uh, you know, within the next year or so. We'll probably get in the ring and and, uh, and straighten things out. I know you might find Williams is baiting of you on social media impertinent. Is there a part of you that's quite happy about it because it builds another option for you as a big fight? Am I happy about someone talking shit about me every day on social media? Probably not. Um, but you know, does it does it add fuel to the fire? Does it get me going? Yeah. Um, so in that sense, uh, I'm not going to say it's a good thing, but, you know, if he's building the fight. He's built the fight, it seems. He, he seems to have a very large following of people that want to see this fight happen. So um, he, may get, he may get what he wishes for, which is actually not what he wants. He doesn't realize it. He doesn't want to fight me, and he, he will understand that if we ever do get in the ring. But um, it would be an exciting fight just for the fact of our styles. Yeah. He's a comfortable fighter, and I don't stop throwing punches. So 
it can't not be a fun fight for the fans. You mentioned Saunders as well. The last time we saw him in a ring was obviously that um, devastating loss to Canelo. Maybe a silly question, but one I want to ask. Did you have any sympathy for him at the injury that he suffered at the end? The, the, uh, the minor black eye that he, that he obtained while in a boxing match which, in which you get punched in the face. Was I, you know, was I sympathetic to that? I mean, it's the, of course not. The guy quit. Not only did he quit, he quit after disrespecting fighters who had done the same thing, Daniel Dubois. Uh, and he quit after saying that he would, you know, die in the ring. You know, you'd have to blind him and take out both his knees and his arms and he still wouldn't give up. He quit after saying all of that, which is unforgivable, shameful, and which is why he went MIA for still no one's heard from him um, up until recently when he said he wants five million pounds to fight me, um, you know, which blows my mind because it's like, who are you to, to be demanding anything? You have no belt, you have no credibility in the sport. Uh, you'll get what you're given when I feel like giving it to you. Um, is it a fan I would I, I want or, yes, he has a win over me. A gift, he, had a, he has a gifted win over me. Uh, that needs to be avenged and it will be avenged, but in, uh, it will be avenged when, you know, when the time is right. Can you just tell us a bit of an update on how things are going with Roy Jones Jr. You guys have been together for a while now. Um, seems like a great partnership from when we've spoken previously. How's that going so far? Great. Me and Roy, we speak all the time. He's, he's over here in England in two days and he'll be training, you know, training me for the next couple of weeks before, before October 2nd. And then, um, and then we'll have a full training camp before the fight in December. And uh, yeah, very happy with how things have been going with Roy he's uh, he's been a real blessing in my career and I'm, I'm learning from him each and every day Are you looking for the fight in December to be a, a marquee fight you might term it a, a big fight A big name or a, or a world title either one of those Have you got a wish list you know a top three or a top five is there ones you want more than others I mean we've mentioned some of the fighters already the fighters we haven't mentioned um, Golovkin he's probably number one he, you know, he's the biggest name in the middleweight division right now. I know I can beat him. It's a fight that was supposed to have supposed to have been made a couple of years back. Got taken away from me. Um, <clears throat> you know, he's he's been in touch with us and he's shown interest. He wants to fight in the UK soon. So that's a, a very big, important fight that can be made within the next six to twelve months. Um, aside from him, you got a lot of great fights in the middleweight division. You know, Andrade, Charlo. Um, I am supposed to be mandatory to fight Murata for the WBA super title. super title. You know, I'm WBA interim, or I was. They took that title away and now made me mandatory. So, you know, I'm hoping that they can, they will enforce that and make it so that he has to fight me and has to defend his belt. Um, so yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be an exciting 12 months. There's so many options and we and now we're going to have it all on Sky Sports. Just finally, before I let you go, what did you make of that WBA decision to uh, eradicate interim belts and to make all the interim champions either mandatory contenders or into final eliminators for the, the normal belts or the regular belts? Um, I mean, you know, I, am I bothered about an interim title? No. You know, the only thing I'm looking at is the full world title. So the fact that it was taken away from me doesn't it doesn't really mean anything. Um, I think it's a good thing if they enforce what they said, which is making us the mandatories for these real or the, the, the full titles. And just before we go, any message for the fans who haven't seen you in action for a little while and they'll be keen to see what you can offer on Sky Sports once again? Sky Sports, October 2nd, Sven Elbeer. It's going to be a fun fight. I'm fit, I'm strong, and uh, I'm excited. And uh, yeah, I'm going to stop this guy. Great, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Cool, brilliant. Thanks, Danny. Cheers, Ed. Cheers.